What advice would you give to someone that is uh, struggling with uh, with addiction? Because I, I know, and you know, in your book, you don't say that you don't tell people this is the path to do it. I mean, everyone. Because what I did, I don't suggest that to anybody. Everybody yeah. can do what I did. Yeah. Okay. I, I went to something that I was told. How many of you speakers? Raise your hands, please. Speakers. How many of you are coaches? Okay. What we do is when we speak as speakers, as coaches, as, as entrepreneurs, the people that are with us, they all have stories in their head that they got from life. My favorite book says, be ye not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. When Dr. Alfred Gosen came to me and said, Les Brown, said, yes, I've got some bad news. I said, what is it? He said, man, he said, you got prostate cancer. Your PSA is 2,400. I said, what does that mean? That means your prostate-specific antigen, one to four is normal. And I asked, I said, is there anything else? He said, yeah, what? It's metastasized to seven areas of your body. I said, wow. He said, why are you smiling? I said, man, seven is my lucky number. <laughs> <laughs> he looked at his nurse. I said, I was born February the 17th. I'm one of seven children. Joshua marched around the walls of Jericho seven times. Naaman dipped himself in the River Jordan seven times. I said, seven is my lucky number. And I asked, is there anything else? He said, yes. And I said, what is it? He said, you're ugly too. <laughs> he said, but you got this. You got this, Brown. Are you listening to me? He said, I never tell my patients they're terminally ill. What I say is that my knowledge, my abilities, and my skills have terminated. I determine the diagnosis. You and God determine the prognosis. A fact is not a verdict. You got your work cut out for you. And I said, thank you. I want you to write this down. Distract, dispute, and inspire. What he did was cancer. Yeah, yeah. Distract. Cancer is the most feared word in seven different languages. So when someone is told you have cancer, the fear alone, there's a book called The Biology of Hope, that it compromises your immune system to protect you by 40%. So what he did was he distracted me from the fear. And, and when he made me laugh, when you laugh, and I use humor in my presentation, because when people laugh, Joe, they're not mm -hmm. thinking, and their hearts open, and then I come up back with, a, with something I want them to get in their heart. He said, you're ugly too, and I started laughing, say, come on, that ain't funny. He said, but you got this, you got this. And I felt it in my heart. He said, a diagnosis is not a prognosis. No, this is no verdict. You and God got this. And that's what we do. When we distract them from the current story mm -hmm. and speak affirmatively, you can make it through this. You dismantle their current belief system. You're now in their heart and you inspire them to become, as Mother Teresa would say, a pencil in the hand of God and start writing a new chapter in their lives. And that was 39 years ago. Mm -hmm. That's why I got the Cancer Centers, Center, uh, Cancer Centers Award of America. Perseverance, 39 years, fourth stage cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then, yeah. So, so, so when we speak, the mindset, your mindset, the, the whole area of psychoneuroimmunology, the mindset, the biology of hope uh, that, that Norman Cousins talked about, mm -hmm. who was a physicist and he le saw old Groucho Marx movies and I Love Lucy and, and use humor to get through it. And so through your mindset, through changing your eating habits and decreasing the toxic negative people in your life and things that's not in alignment with you are being able to live a, a life of, of joy, harmony, and peace. Mm -hmm.
That's very important. You have to begin to assess yourself and look at your life. And, and you, you have to say, who is it I can count on and who should I count out? And you're one of those people I call. I said, Joe, been through this. This is his passion. And then I went online. I started doing research. I wanted to find out. I told everybody, if you know somebody who died from prostate cancer, don't tell me. I'm not interested. I want to know who lived. Mm -hmm. There's a song called, don't, I don't want nobody bringing me any bad news. I'm not being insensitive. I just don't need that in my consciousness. And so the, so I went online and saw this good Dr. Lee starving cancer mm -hmm. and Chris beat cancer. And I started talking to people, a guy who is in, in, in my book that I talk about, who I went to meet him at his house. He was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And they, they said people die within six months. And it's been eight years now. And I asked him, I said, man, why are you here? He said, three doctors told him to get his affairs in order. But there was a doctor he had developed a relationship with. And I talk about this in the book. And he came in and he said, this is for you. And he gave him a clock. It was wrapped up and he unpackaged the, the gift, the clock. He said, man, there's no hands on this clock. He said, I know. He said, you have to determine how long you want to be here. That's your call. That's not us. That's you. You now have to take responsibility for what you, what you want to do at this point. You can either surrender to what we have told you. And I'm saying to you that we are not experts. This is a practice because I got a stethoscope and a white jacket just because I said or my partner said that you have a terminal illness does not mean that it's true. Life is a fight for territory. And once you stop fighting for what you want, what you don't want will automatically take over. You got to fight on your hands. Wow. There's a point in time where, as you know, you've sat through with many people when life ends, it is time to let go. And that, uh, do you have a fear of death? No. Here's, to, I'm not a religious person, I want to say, because I, I, I quote a lot of things from the Bible everywhere. The, I'm not a religious person, but I, I'm a spiritual person. Religious people are afraid of going to hell. Spiritual people have been there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and hell to me is what you experience when you die and you meet the person that you were supposed to become. That's why one of my mentees, Dr. Miles Monroe out of the Bahamas, who died in a plane crash, that we, and I give my speech, live full and die empty. He said, the ideal situation for a man or woman to die, Howard Thurman, is to have family members praying with you as you're about to cross over. But he said, imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents, the gifts given to you by life, but you, for whatever reason, you never used those talents. You never tapped into those gifts. You never made that contribution. You never made the impact that you were chosen out of 400 million sperm to make. And there they are standing around your bed, looking at you with large, angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. I want all of you to say with me, live full. Live full. Say it again, live full. Live full. Die empty. Die empty. That's what the Genius Network is about. It's about robbing the cemetery of the gifts that you have in you. You are a masterpiece because you're a piece of the master. You were born and preserved for such a time as this. Don't come for me. I didn't call an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> now, once you write this down, resilient, purpose-driven mindset. Resilient, purpose-driven 
mindset that with all the, the stuff that's going on, with all of the confusion from the from the scientific community, from the from the leadership, from the presidency on down, it has collateral effect. And there are so many people that's confused. You wear the mask so you don't have to wear the mask. Or if you have the coronavirus, you need to wear the mask so you don't give it to somebody else. And if you have it, uh, you should stay in the house. They got all kinds of things. If you make love, you should have the mask on. That is not romantic to me. <laughs> and you know, I say, wait a minute, y'all cover all up in the bedroom. Okay, baby, put your mask on. Well, I'm gonna kiss you with my mask on. <laughs> You know, all this stuff going on and you can die from talking to somebody with a mask that's held under their nose. You know why my hair is like it and I'm looking like kid and, and play like kid from House Party? Because my barber, he likes to wear his mask like this. I said, man, put your mask on, all right? I told him. So he does this. Hey, hello. Habla Espanol, English? What? Come on. Have I told? Put your mask or cover your mouth. I know your breath kicking like Bruce Lee, but cover the nose too. It's, uh, oh, I mean, about to make me lose my mind over here. So I decided I'm not going through that. I'm not going through that. I'm I'm not coming out the house till 2027. And I. I work on myself. I got some new squirrel friends. I'm bilingual. I speak squirrely. And I listen to motivational messages. First thing in the morning, you want to listen to my voice. Go on YouTube. Find Les Brown speaking in the Georgia Dome. I find Les Brown. It's possible. And I tell the story about the bamboo tree. I find Les Brown getting unstuck. And I talk about chicken man. Listen to things, listen to me. Listen to things that can build your mental resiliency. You wanna have a resilient, purpose-driven mindset that will focus your mind on the goals that you want to achieve, on the things that you need to do to reinvent yourself, to rethink your life, to, to see whether or not you're on the path to becoming the next greatest version of yourself. And in order to, to get through this time, I mean, sometimes I, I when I wake up in the morning, I said, this is still not a dream. This is crazy. This, uh, people say, I'd like to come by and see you. Is that right? Okay, I'm on the first floor. We can talk through the window. <laughs> come on. I mean, I mean, just think about this. Every day when I see people with masks on looking outside my window, seeing the squirrels jumping from one tree to the other, they never lose their footing. That's why I learned squirrely. Tyrone, he's leading everybody. He's introducing everybody to me. He's the most motivated squirrel in my neighborhood. Les Brown is about to do his stream yard or another Zoom. <laughs> My kids say I've been in the house too long. I'm, I'm suffering from cabin fever. Whatever. <laughs> so read 30 to 40 pages of something positive every day. Drill yourself. You say, well, I've listened to it. No, 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 no. Listen to it until you're manifesting results. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. So in order to develop that resilient, purpose-driven mindset, you, you want to listen to the messages over and over, take notes on things that jumps out for you and, and become the embodiment of it and develop that kind of mindset and how you carry yourself and how you face this thing called life. Faith not tested can be trusted. So you got to have faith in yourself. But we're being tested right now. If you've never been tested, listen to me. No test, no testimony. 
Faith not tested can't be trusted. It's easy to have faith when things are going great, when the kids are acting like they have good sense, when you have a job, you have money, you have your health. Oh, no big deal then. But when life knocks on the door, when you go through some stuff, when you get a bad diagnosis, that's when you have to pull on your faith. That's, that's when you have to be resilient. I've got a saying, and all of you know it, life knocks you down, try and land on your back. Because if you can look up, you can get up. Now, here's the other thing that's very important. As you look at yourself, you want to master at least three things. Three things, multiple streams of income. Three things, I speak, I train speakers, and I'm an author. And I got other things I'm expanding. And I'm 75. Well, why are you still doing it? Because you're never too old to learn and you're never too young to teach. I believe that the reason that, uh, that, that we look at people over a certain age and Alzheimer's and dementia becomes active is because they are inactive. My mother used to say it, if you don't use it, you lose it. It, it, it takes longer to wear out than to rust out. So the goal is, is to be actively engaged in life, raising the bar on yourself. Turn down the amount of time that you spend entertaining yourself, watching the television, as, as my daughter, Dr. Ona Brown would say, and, and, and do things that will stimulate your thinking. It will keep you young. Just because you're 75, chronologically don't mean that you have to look 75. No, no. And so I decided just because I'm 75, you're not gonna count me out. I'm still here. I'm going to be engaged in this thing called life because I have not done my best work yet. You have not done your best work yet. Every day is the best day of your life as Orrin Hudson would say out of Atlanta, the chess master. Why? Because if you don't believe that, try missing a day. <laughs> Every day is the best day of your life. Look for ways in which you can begin to master something, learn something today that you did not know yesterday. Expand your horizon, expand your vision of what's possible for you. Continuously be a student. My high school theme was you never find out how much you know until you find out how little you know. Study the people that are gonna make it today are looking at the various trends. They, they're going from mindset mastery, learning three things that they can master to create, create non-performance income, and they're studying continuously, learning things that they can get at the end of their fingertips on the internet. There's no excuse, no excuse today for not being in the mindset of achieving something beyond that which you have already done. Life is an adventure. Helen Keller said life is either a daring adventure or it's boring. And, and this is an exciting time that you can earn money at the comfort of your home. Think about that. Virtually around the world. I, I just finished talking to some people in Germany. And then I talked to some people in Toronto, Canada. I'm making money around the world and I'm still home, virtually. Take advantage of this. This is something you want to learn. Mindset mastery and skill set mastery of the internet. Make it important to know what drives you and what's most important now. There are things that used to be important to me, they're no longer important. And that's why I've been doing Operation Clean Slate, getting a lot of stuff and a lot of people out of my life. I remember when I read the book, Who's the Matter With Me? I wrote down the names of the family members and friends that I communicated with most. And I asked myself the question, is this relevant? This relationship, is it productive? Is it 
positive. Is this relationship, does it bring the best out of me? This relationship, this energy, that does it challenge me? Hold me accountable to a higher standard. People rub off on you. Academy Award winner Sidney Poitier said, when you go for a walk with someone, something happens without being spoken. He said, either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? I want you to write this down. OQP, going forward, only quality people. I do not allow myself to be in the company of people that I know more than them. Why? If you're the smartest one in the group, you, you need to get a new group. No, no. Jim Rohn said something. He said, your life is either a warning or an example. A, a warning of what not to do or an example of what to do. And, and part of what I'm saying to my children, hey, be careful about who you're around with. I remember mama saying, Leslie, if you run around with nine broke people, she said, I guarantee you, you become number 10. <laughs> and so as you look at growing your practice, as you look at uh, making a greater impact in your community, as, as, as you look at the things that you want to do and, 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 and being involved in legacy building and, and, and making the rest of your life the best of your life, we have to constantly monitor and be mindful of who's around us and what relationships that we have. People say, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Not just that, it's who you know and what they know about you. Do you have the kind of re reputation in the industry that, that people will see you as a go-to person? God said to Abraham, you know, I make your name great. Didn't say I make you a great man. I, I make your name great. The reason that when, when, when Fab calls me, he's a good man. He calls me, I don't call everybody back, but when he calls me, because of how I see him and because of my relationship with him, because of his vision, because of his integrity, because of the stand that he's taken with his life. People say, practice what you preach. No, preach what you practice. And what I know about him, I'm gonna answer his call. I'm gonna follow up. And that's the kind of relationships going forward in and out of the pandemic that we have to continue to look for and to develop some of the relationships that we need to spend less time with. There's some people, if we never saw them again, it would be too soon. <laughs> yes, what I what I read that that you earned with the two to three thousand dollars of your closest friends, I got all my broke friends out of my life. <laughs> Be so broke, I walk past the bank and trip the alarm. <laughs> and so, this is the time you have to look at who's around me, who's the matter with you. Mm. And so, I want to talk to you about how to begin to to begin to create the major shift in your life and who you have to be and what you have to do. And so, in in doing that. I, I, when I start moving, hey, oh, how you doing, Dallas? Yeah, yeah, the light was in my eyes, I couldn't see you, yeah. So as you as you look at yourself, look at your goals and dreams, what is, what's going to be major right now is bringing about what are the steps you need to take? What is it that you need to do to, to bring about building a new life? I thought about building a new life for myself when I was fired from radio because that's that's what I knew. I mastered that when I did it. I'm not saying it because I'm being braggadocious, but people who heard me in Columbus, Ohio, during the time that I was on the air, they'll tell you, Mamie Brown's baby boy, he's a bad brother up in there, up in there. Nobody did it like I did it before me or since me, nobody, period, all right? It's not true because I said it, but I said it because it's true. And so what we have to begin to embrace and to know is something that Socrates said. He said, the secret to change is to focus all your energy, all of your energy, not on fighting the old, but building the new you. 
put all your energy, not fighting the old, but building the new you. So let's let's look at building the new you, you look like. What, what is it that you have to do in order to do that? Number one, self-awareness. Taking time to rethink your life. I've been up since around 3.30 this morning, just thinking, just thinking about my life and my relationship with myself and the choices that I want and the things that I had envisioned that I would have accomplished in 2020, and I did not do that. And it was because of me. See, at the end of the day, all of us are the same. The only thing that separates us are the choices we make, the habits that we embrace. And I realized, and I want you to write this down, sacrifice. You've got to sacrifice who you've been in 2020. You've got to sacrifice whoever that person was. You, you got to let it go. You got to sacrifice that and, and put all of your time and energy on building the new you. And building the new you, in my particular case, is more discipline. In my particular case, in monitoring, monitor, monitoring myself and my progress, staying on top of it, watching, am I doing well? Am I moving and in the direction where I want to move? Because if I do that, Cancer would be history in my life. History. I, I don't. I don't. I'm not comfortable with with having cancer on the ropes for 29 years. Fourth stage cancer. No, no. My goal is to knock it out, and that's on me. Cancer's not playing. I'm not playing. And so to to focus my mind on that. To, to give up the things that will distract me from, from doing that, to make the sacrifice of some things that I enjoy doing, but I, I cannot afford to do it because it's soaking up time and time is life. Time is life. You have something special. You have greatness in you. And you have the ability to create and design the kind of life that you want. And in this place where we are right now, things have changed dramatically. And so you have to make a dramatic change in yourself in order to accomplish the things that you want. What does that look like? What is it you have to do? In my case, mine and, and my battle has been with cancer, fourth stage. Th that looks like intensifying my efforts and monitoring everything that I eat. It has to be organic. But my state of mind, keeping stress to a minimum. I don't play that. Anything that's unhealthy, anybody that's unhealthy for me, I cut off the relationship. I don't ask them, why did you do that? I cut it off. Why? It's my life. See, I, we got enough to deal with. When you got the coronavirus that has now mutated into another lethal form and easier to spread, that kind of tension and stress by itself is enough. So you, you're not given the luxury of accommodating toxic, negative people in your life if you want to live. I want to live. I, I remember years ago, I, I, I read this book called Who's the Matter With Me? You know, you've had people say, you make me sick, that's real. There are people who can do that to you if you allow them to do that. And you, you have to put your foot down and say, I don't do drama. Don't come up here with that. I don't do drama. And, and, um, don't, and you don't have to defend that. See, there is no duplicate for life. You only get one. And so you want to live it to the fullest. You, you want to have special moments. You want to have peace of mind. 47% of Americans can't get a good night's sleep. And I've been one of them. Bobby, you have to work at it. Here's something else. M make a conscious effort 
to look at and recruit people in your life that, that you know that have been good to you, that you need to deepen that relationship, that they bring out the best in you, they inspire you, they make you feel good about yourself, y'all have fun together. You want to reach out to those people and, and, and schedule some time to see each other virtually, virtually, each week where you have individual and collective goals that you're working on. I'm doing that with my family and with my clients. I'm working with them. And, and that's why I would like to say to those of you that would like for me to coach you and like to be in a community of greatness, I want you to put hungry, hungry in the comments section. If you like to work with me, if you'd like for me to be your coach in, in, in this first 90 days, to teach you some of the things I've learned. I'm 75, and so I've learned some things. I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. Let me share something with you. When you upgrade your relationships, when you make it a point to consciously get toxic, negative, energy draining people. People have a propensity for creating drama out of your life. Sometimes you don't even realize how toxic some relationships are until you get out from under them. And I'm sure you've had the experience when somebody created a whole lot of problems for you and something happened. And when it ended, you say, whoa, I had no idea. I, a friend of mine, her husband died. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And she said, oh, no, don't be. <laughs> no, I'm glad he go, honey. I'm glad, I'm glad he go. No, 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 don't, don't, don't be sad for me. Don't be sad for my loss. Oh, no, it's real good. God, well, look at God. He answered prayers. Oh, <laughs> I was shocked. I was shocked. And so, and another friend, I saw the blade, I, and, and she had gone through a divorce. I said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. She said, don't be, don't be, no, no, no. I have peace of mind, honey. It's better to be alone than to wish you were. I've heard you say that, and it, that's real. That relationship was turning my hair gray. I gained an extra 65 pounds. No, I'm, I'm good, I'm fine all by myself. <laughs> I'm in the same car, right? You know, Corona, she has, she has everybody rethinking stuff up in here. <laughs> rethinking. People looking at each other saying, hmm, I don't know if I want to do this for another 20 years. <laughs> People look at me all the yeah. <laughs> You know, I, I thought I could hang in there, but no, no, no. You're taking too many vitamins and things. Honey. Looks like you want to live. No, no, no. <laughs> Here's the other thing. Do something that's you. When I look at my life, and I, and I really want you to look at this and think about this when I'm through. Do something that the future you will say, thank you for making that decision. Thank you for doing that. Thanking, thank you for, for taking your life in a new direction. That's what you want your future self to say. Because in my case, I decided I was going to do something I love. My calling is to speak. My calling is to train speakers. My calling is to change lives. I decided consciously I was going to find a way to do it. One, I invested in myself. This will not be a new year unless you learn something this year that will have a dramatic impact on your life that you did not know last year that will allow you to take care of yourself that allow you to control your own personal economy, that allow you to call your own shots, that allow you to have peace of mind. 
most people they're through with the celebration they forgot what their their new year's resolutions were no 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 you listen to me for 90 days mental resolve is major now people having meltdowns snappy blanking out mental resolve is major now it's it's a, a series that i've done on how you can choose the future that you want rather than the future that's already set in place and that's delivered to you and you just step into you don't want to do that no you, you only given one life you want to create we're created by the creator to create and sometimes we, we just go to sleep at the will of life. You don't want to do that. You want to wake up. And, and every move you make, you want to make it meaningful. Every move you make, you, you want to mean something. Everything you do, you want some payoff out of it. You went through too much in 2020 not to make 2021 the best year on the planet. You went through too much to get here. Let me tell you. I mean, that Corona, she ain't playing. But we're not playing either. In order to create the life you want, it requires sacrifice. It requires discipline. It requires expanding the time that you spend with yourself, looking at yourself and asking yourself the question, is this the life that I want to live? Is this me? Is this relationship me? Where I'm living is this environment, me. The job that I'm doing to provide for myself or my family, is that me? Do I have some other options? Absolutely. Then do that which is you. Don't, don't, don't be a member of the woulda, shoulda, coulda club. No, or I, 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 or I, I, woulda, I would if, I should if. Come on, no, that doesn't work, no. Only put off for tomorrow the things that you're okay with dying in you today. You have something special. And you, you are here. We are here because of God's grace and mercy. We are here to do the greater work. And feel good about that. Feel good if you're still reeling from 2020. I know I'm still reeling from it. I'm saying... It couldn't end fast enough for me. I'm telling you. And so this time, as you look behind, and thank God that you made it. Look around and praise God. See the new opportunities, doors open that you did not see. And look within. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Go within and seek God and look ahead and follow God. Let him order your steps because this is your time. You've gone through too much hell for 2021 not to be your time. Get it done. 21. You've got to come at it with a vengeance. Take no prisoners and eat the wounded. Get it done in 21. Oh no, Corona. Don't try and come up here. I don't care how many cousins you got and how many mutations you got up in here, up in here. I'm not no fool. I'm going to keep social distancing. I'm going to do the things that I need to do to live to be here and stay away from those crazies, but I'm going to get it done. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to do some things that, that I dreamed about and, and things I've been putting off and make it happen. Find a way. People are being creative now, unlike anything we've seen before. Because when you are locked down, you can't move around, you come up with all kinds of stuff. I'm just reading where a guy was in military. He was in confinement in prison, in solitary confinement. And he used that time productively to study math and came up with some masterful mathematical equations, solving problems. 
that people who were not in prison in solitary confinement haven't done. The genius, he, he took that time to think rather than be in despair. He took that time to be productive rather than just sit in solitary confinement and beat his head up against the wall. Yeah, they imprisoned him, but they didn't imprison his mind. You got a mind. Be ye not conformed to this world. Oh, yes. Don't allow your mind to be the victim of, of, of weapons of mass distractions. You got work to do. You're on a mission. Mission possible. This is your time. Get excited about it. Sit down. You know what I do in the morning? I, at first, I, 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 I said, all things work together for good for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose. Next thing I say, Lord, whatever I face today together, you and I can handle it. Next thing I do, I review the seven things that I want to get out of the day. Seven things that I want to get out of the day. Most people just want to get through the day. See, if you don't have an agenda for your life, you're going to be a part of somebody else's agenda. Okay? And the next thing that's very, very important, make a commitment to learn something today that you didn't know yesterday. Make a commitment before you go to bed tonight that there's something new that you have learned. If you develop those habits, let me share something with you. The opportunities of creating joy, love, happiness, and excitement unlimited. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you are serious about reaching goals? Raise your hands, please. Very good. Jim Rowan asked this question. Look at the people in your life and ask the question, what is this relationship doing to me? See, in order for you to go to the next level, there are some people you need to let go. Let us say together, let go or be dragged. There are some people because of their negativity, their emotional vampires, they will drain you. You want to be around people that you can learn from, that you can grow from. Dr. Dennis Kimball out of Atlanta said, if you're the smartest one in your group, you need to get a new group. Bless, can I change them? No, it's a full-time job changing yourself. There are some people that's comfortable being negative, comfortable being a volunteer victim. There are some people that's so negative they can walk into a dark room and begin to develop. Oh, behave. <laughs> My medication wearing off now. You're talking about earning more money. You got to be serious. One sickness can wipe out a fortune. 95% of the people who filed bankruptcy last year did so because of medical expenses. People say money won't make you happy, but everybody want to find out for themselves. A friend of mine, Rita Davenport, said money ain't important, but it's right up there with oxygen. <laughs> and let me tell you something, fellas, even if you're as homeless as I am, you got some money, women will find something cute on you. <laughs> Oh, he's got earlobes like Tom Cruise. He's got to walk like Denzel Washington. <laughs> I used to be so broke, I'd walk past a bank and trip the alarm. <laughs> Creditors would call the house of my children would answer the phone and say, my daddy say he ain't home. <laughs> and sometimes they would catch me on the phone. May I speak to Les Brown, please? Sorry, but he's not here. You sound like Les Brown. Don't you go there, big boy. <laughs> Fox that money can't buy you happiness, but it can make a big down payment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this thing called life. Here's something else. Write this down. You're going to fail your way to success. There are people who look promising. They're going to disappoint you, hurt your feelings. There are people who who should be there to encourage you, to motivate you, they're going to be the number one members of the discouragement club. Before things get better for you, they're going to get real bad. 
When you have a dream, think it not strange that you'll face the fiery furnaces of this world. You will, not you might, you will have tribulations. How many of you know that's true? Raise your hands, please. Things are going to happen to you. And don't complain. Don't go around telling everybody. 80% don't care. 20% glad is you. <laughs> Suck it up. And keep on prospecting. And make it happen. Life is happening to everybody. Everybody let us sit together. Leap and grow your wings on the way down. See, in order to control your destiny, you've got to be a risk taker. You've got to be willing to risk people talking about you. You've got to be willing to risk someone saying no. You've got to be willing to fail again and again and again. You're different. You're an entrepreneur. You're strange. You're not like everybody else. We live in a world where we're told more about our limitations rather than our potential, and so most people just can't see themselves doing better. But you're different. You see some things they can't see. And I encourage you, every one of you in this room right now, you're here for a reason. How many of you know people who should be here? Raise your hands, please. Yes. But you know what? They're in their rightful place. Their rightful place is where their thoughts have brought them. Their true place is where their thoughts can take them. Everybody is in their rightful place. Here's something else. Seek out positive information. I want you to write this down. My Facebook page is brown.less. Every day we post a positive message there every day the brown dot less because you're in this room i want you to write this down because we're going to send you we're going to do something called presentation power you're going to get a chance to to view some videos that will give you some directions but more importantly today we're going to send you i'm going to send you seven power strategies of how to be a powerful storyteller so email me at yes at lesbrown.com and say, send me the seven principles. Mention that you were at this convention. We'll send that to you free. It will give you a guideline how to tell your story. When I started off this presentation, I started off telling my story. I was born in a poor section of Miami, Florida in Liberty City. Born in an abandoned building with a twin brother. Do you remember I told you that? My mother worked on Miami Beach as a domestic worker making up beds, cooking for families. Remember I told you that? See, your story is your power. How many of you have gone through some things? Raise your hands, please. How many of you have experienced some things in your life? Raise your hands, please. How many of you have periods in your life like me where you're temporarily insane? Raise your hand, please. <laughs> your story. The presentation power. We'll tell you how to tell your story. I've given lectures at Harvard, Yale, spoken around the world telling my story. You got a story too. Here's what the power of the story does and why it's important in your presentation and building your organization and why it's going to give you the upper hand and how to recruit people and how, how many like to get A players? Raise your hands, please. Good. Here's what your story does. Write this down. Distract. See how people live their lives as a result of the story they believe about themselves. When you are presenting one-on-one -on -one or a small group or in a large group, when you tell your story, you are creating an interruption. When you're telling your story about the business, of being on a path of creating financial independence, you're in interrupting their story, what psychologists call the self-explanatory style. So distract. Let us say together, distract. Here's the other one. Say dispute. When you are going through your presentation, and we're going to teach you how to do this, you're dismantling their limited belief system where they've been programmed to believe only in having a job, the journey of the broke, where they're miserable, they go to work, where they pay them just enough to keep them from quitting, and they work just hard enough to keep from getting fired. That's what you call mixed emotions. Seeing somebody you hate drive off a cliff 
in your car. You are glad they're gone, but not in my car. Can you feel me up in here, up in here? Can you feel me? People go to jobs that they hate, 87% of Americans, and guess what? And they pray they don't get fired. That's, 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 myth. that's no way to live. That's why you're here. You just said, you know what? No, I ain't going out like this. <laughs> I'm telling you. And people think you're crazy, and you are. You got to be crazy today. You got to be out of your mind. My favorite book said, let that mind be in you. You got to have another mind in you that says, I got this. This is my life. I own this. I'm going to call the shots here. Nobody's going to tell me how much I'm worth, what time I can take a lunch break. I'm not going to anybody and ask for permission to take my family on vacation. No. No, I got this. I've got a vehicle take me to another place. That's why you said yes. Give yourselves a round of applause.